Hi everyone, this is Josh with Josh Wright Piano TV. Today's concept is probably the most important thing I'll ever teach in any of these Piano TV videos. Um, it's the concept of efficient practice. This is the most asked question, the most frequently asked question by all students everywhere, I think. How do I practice? Um, you know, some people want to know how to get their trills better. I've done a video on that. Some people need help with arpeggios, octaves, thirds, uh, tremolos, all these weird concepts I've posted videos on. And I've done a small thing about organized practicing, but I wanted to do something about efficient practicing. How can I become quicker in how I accomplish my tasks each day? How can I maximize my time? Time is a very valuable um, asset in today's society. If we squander it away, we find ourselves not accomplishing much. If we use it to the fullest extent, we can accomplish great things. And also, some of us only have a certain amount of time to practice at the piano um, each day. So if you only have, if, if I, for, for instance, if I'm teaching five hours of lessons each day, and then I go to three hours of class, you know, there's eight hours right there. You take out maybe an hour or two for eating meals throughout the day. Um, so there's almost nine or ten hours, uh, depending on how long you take to do that. Ten hours if you get up at eight in the morning, already you're at ten out. You're at six at night, and you haven't even touched the piano. So, and how late are you going to practice? Maybe you're one of those people that practices till midnight. I don't know what your schedules are like. You need to figure out how much time you can figure, uh, how you, how much time you can dedicate to your practice sessions, and then within that, organize it so that you can say, I'm going to spend this much time on this piece, this much time on that piece. But but after you've done that, how do you get good within those little organized pieces? And today we're going to figure out how. Okay. Um, the biggest thing that I want to instill in, upon everyone's minds is humility, realizing that we are really uh, not as powerful as we think. Um, when I sit down to learn a new piece, uh, I might read through the whole piece one time, but through years and years of failing, I realize I can't sit and work on a page at a time. Anybody working on a page at a time is either the most brilliant person around or they just are not being as efficient as they can. Because even after almost 20 years of playing, uh, I'm in my doctoral program right now, so I've gone to some pretty good schools and studied with some pretty amazing teachers. Even after all of that experience, I still feel like, wow, I really can't handle more than maybe a couple measures of hard material at once. If I'm sight reading a little piece for a kid, yeah, I don't need to sit and take it measure by measure, but if, if I'm working on, like right now, I'm working on Tchaikovsky Concerto, so this cadenza is killing me. To know exactly where all those octaves are has been killer to learn. I've only worked on it for about three weeks, but I've been able to accomplish a, quite a big part of the portion of the concerto, and this is how. Each day, I will take one small section. So say, that day I want to work on two pages, maybe even one page, okay? And I just got done saying, if you're doing a page at once, what I'm saying is a page for the whole day, or two pages for the entire day. Don't try and do more than that, unless you have to learn it in a week to perform with the New York Philharmonic. We're going to take this slow and methodically. Okay, so, if you're starting um, to learn a piece, so we'll, we'll just start with um, a Bach prelude, and or, I mean, um, the Bach minuet. Okay. Um, and we're just going to say that we're going to try and learn one line that day. I would do this over and over again. Look for patterns. Okay, I notice that's a G major hand, uh, five finger pattern. So you just take that little first part, then you do the left hand. Over and over again until it's perfect, then you do this. Everybody's with me so far. Okay, everybody's done that in their life. This right here, this next step that I'm going to show you is where everyone usually fails. They say, great, I have the first measure, let's move on. But do they move on to this measure? No, they start back over and they add on to the material they have. And this is what usually happens. Everyone comes to their lesson, first measure is great, second measure is worse, third measure, and by the second line, things are falling apart. Looking out at the music. Okay. Don't do 
do that. Don't add to what you previously did right away. You'll add later. Let me show you what I would do. Start on the next measure. Do it hands alone and hands together perfectly. Or you tell it's perfect, sorry. And then... those two individual pieces perfect, put them together, hands alone and hands together. I'm just going to do hands together for the sake of time. Okay, now I want you to put that in a little box in your mind somewhere. Leave it for a second. It's not going anywhere. If you go on a two-year trip somewhere, it might go somewhere. You might forget it. But that's not going anywhere. Especially retired students who are in their 50s, 60s, 70s, they get extremely nervous to leave that. They say, oh, I, just, I just perfected it. I don't want to leave it alone. So they just keep adding, and that's, that's setting yourself up for failure. Trust yourself. You are smart, okay? We're not quite as powerful as we think sometimes, but we are capable human beings. We can remember that for longer than five seconds. So leave it alone. Okay, now we're going to go on to the next measure. good. Okay, and then this measure by itself, sorry, I don't have my music, so I'm trying to do this from memory. Let's see. I'm do that, and then this by itself. Over and over again. Then you put those two little pieces together. Okay, and you don't have to do it measure by measure. You can do it by, by little uh, pieces that make sense. So a lot of times, um, composers will write things across like one and a half measures, and that makes good logical sense. You do these in little pieces, okay? So now you have that little, uh, those two ideas combined into one now. Now you can go back. You don't have to do this right away, but now you can go back and put those two bigger pieces together. Hands alone to hands together. Again, I'll just do hands together to save time. And so on, okay? And you stop, and then you leave that, and then you move on. Okay, now I'm going to speak to the advanced students. Um, in learning this Tchaikovsky concerto, I want to tell you how I went about doing it. And I wasn't able to do this right off the bat when I was 11 or 12 or 13 when I started learning my first concerto. I, I've had to develop this over time. But again, I'm just doing little pieces within these larger assignments. The first uh, week and a half or so, I said, I'm going to learn the first movement of the Tchaikovsky Concerto. And, and it was a cut version. I, I left out some of the middle. I'm learning it for this concerto competition that has a time limit, so we had to cut some of the material out. So I did maybe the first 15 or 20 pages, and then the last 10 or so. So I think the first, uh, in my edition, the first movement is around 48 pages. So I said, okay, how in the world am I going to do this? Uh, it's 18 pages, and then it's another 10 pages. So the first few days, the first five or six days, I just focused on that first piece of the concerto, the first 18 pages or so. Each day I said, I'm only going to work two to three pages. This is panicking uh, for a lot of, or this, this causes a lot of people to panic because they think, oh my gosh, how am I going to get 18 pages learned in six days? This is absolutely crazy. I'm going to fail. And then they just play through it a million times and they take it to the last and it's awful. Relax. You have time to do it. You've got to find the time to do it and then trust that you can finish it in a small amount of time. Um, because you just practice like I did that Bach little, that little Bach minuet. How I teach a five-year-old to practice is the same way I practice, just with more difficult pieces. Okay, so each day I did two or three pages, two or three pages. After six days, 18 pages are pretty learned. Each day I'll go back and I'll review what I did before first uh, in little, maybe a little bigger section, like maybe one or two lines, and then I'll move on and work on my new material. Okay. Now, this is, this is where most of you uh, will differ as well. This is kind of the breaking point for advanced students. Leave that alone, even for a few days. You're going to be okay. Things actually take time to season. Uh, they take time to um, really get in your body and sometimes, uh, and, and in your mind. Sometimes taking a two to three day break is actually a good thing. You don't need to keep reviewing every, every day, every day, every day. You can move on. So the next few days, I learned the last, I think it's eight or ten pages, I can't remember exactly, but I started from that part, okay? Um, 
and I just worked little tiny sections, okay? Didn't even touch the first part at all, okay? Just trust yourself. You will remember. It will come back after a few days, okay? Um, if, if you haven't touched it for a few days, it will come back quickly. Okay, then what I did is I put those back together, okay? So after, after, I, got, uh, after I finished the last part, I came back to the beginning chords, okay? And I put those two big pieces together. 10 days, 11 days, the whole first movement cut version, uh, so maybe 30 pages, is learned. Okay, it's not miraculous. I didn't accomplish some amazing feat. Uh, I learned two to three pages. Uh, remember, you, a lot of you might be thinking, that's a huge feat, I could never do that. But remember, be proportional. I've been playing for 20 years. Even if you've been playing for 20 years, but maybe you haven't got some of these concepts, uh, don't get hard on yourself. Don't, don't get down on yourself because Remember, we have to all go at our own pace. So for you, the equivalent of two to three pages a day might be two to three lines a day. Some of you, it might be 10 pages a day. Some of you are probably a lot brighter than I am, and you can do this more quickly, okay? So you do what you want. This, this concept stays the same, regardless of the level, okay? Then the next week, what I did is uh, I learned the second and third movements, um, just the cut versions, probably a total of eight minutes, so it's not the entire things, okay? Uh, it's a 20 minute concerto competition. So I said, okay, I'll do about eight minutes of the second and third movement total. And so I learned those that week. Didn't touch the first movement for an entire week. After that week, I went back, I practiced the first movement heavily, second and third movements lightly. Then this last week, I put them all together. It's okay to drop a portion that you just learned for a few days in order to learn new material. You burden your practice sessions when you practice old material constantly. Once you've learned it, once it's comfortable and pretty perfect, even if it's in a slower tempo, move on, learn new stuff if you're trying to get a lot done. If you have all the time in the world, you don't have to listen to this video, but I'm trying to help people become more efficient here. So you can move on to a new section, then bring it back and put it together. This is a great way to build repertoire. A lot of people ask me, they say, I'm working on 10 pieces right now, how do I balance it? And I think that's absolutely craziness. You work on two pieces or three pieces at a time for one week, two to three the next week, two to three the next week. Then after that, you do four pieces a week, four pieces a week, four pieces a week, and you can recycle a couple of the hard ones. Five pieces a week, five, seven, and then seven, and you can recycle the hardest ones, and then you do all 10. See, it takes a little while each week, figure out, you can, you can add more in each week, but you have to do it methodically. You don't want to be practicing all 10 pieces at once. And remember, within those pieces, only practice certain sections by themselves. Don't add everything together. This is so important. I hope that I've instilled that in each of you and that you'll be willing to try this because I've seen great success in my own playing, in other students in my studios playing, um, uh, and, um, and the kids I teach as well, and the adults I teach. I, I teach both uh, young kids and and old adults, um, retired students, mid-aged mid students, everybody learns pretty much the same. We learn at different rates, but we all need to do it in small pieces. So, if anybody has questions, uh, please feel free to email me. My email is josh at joshwrightpiano.com. I'm also teaching private students online, um, and so is my wife, Lindsay. She's an amazing teacher working on her doctorate. If anyone's interested in private online lessons, also send me an email at josh at joshwrightpiano.com and I'll send you the information about that. Thank you and have a great day.